What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over Leak Code 169, Majority Element. First we'll go over the input and output, and then we'll look at the approach. We'll be doing Divide and Conquer. And finally we'll look at the code. So the input is going to be an integer array, and the output is going to be an integer. We have to find the majority element. We're guaranteed that there is going to be a majority element, which means a number that appears more than half the times in the array, where n is the length of the array, so we need to find a number which appears at least n by two times. Because we're doing divide and conquer, this is how we'll approach it. What we do is we take the input array and we split it. So let's say i is the left pointer, j is the right pointer, and we split it down the middle and we recursively ask the left and right side, hey, can you guys tell me your majority element? And both sides will do their job and the left will return left, the right will return right, and then if they're the same, if left and right are the same, then there's no problem. Both of them agree. So we can have a combined answer and we return whatever answer that they both agreed on. Otherwise, if there's a disagreement, then we're going to manually calculate what left said and what right said. So what we're going to do is take whatever answer left said is going to say three, let's say, for example and right could say 5. If they're different, what we're going to do is iteratively calculate on the left side the indexes from i to whatever midpoint it was, how many times 3 came up, and the right is also going to do the same thing. It's going to calculate how many times 5 showed up, and we'll take both of their counts and compare. Whichever number is the higher count, that's going to be the majority element. Now let's look at a more concrete example. Let's say our input was one integer array. So let's just use two. Then the left and right pointers are going to be at the same point. So we just return whatever number it is, and that's our majority element. If this was our input, we take this, split it in half, and this recurses down and boils down to this. So both of these are going to break down into one integer arrays, and they're both going to return true. What if this was our input? What if we had a 2 comma 2? Our pointers are i and j again on the left and right side. In this example, we split it in half and both the left and right subarrays boil down to the base case. Both of them are going to return true and since they agree, we can just return 2 as the answer for this array. What about this case? What if we introduce a new number? Now when we split it in half, so with the i and j, this is going to boil down to this, and this is going to boil down to that. So these guys are going to return 2. The 3 is going to say, wait a minute, 3 is my majority element. And because now this and this are different, the left and right subarrays disagree, we are going to do a count between i and this midpoint to see how many times 2 showed up. We're going to do a count between this midpoint and j to see how many times this 3 showed up. Whichever number has a higher count is the number we're going to return. So once again, 2 is going to be the output. Here's the code. So we take our input array, get the two pointers, 0 and n minus 1 for the left and right side. Then what we do, the base case, always check if the pointers are matching. If they're meeting up at one element, we simply return the element. Otherwise, we recursively find the left and right halves by taking the midpoint, i plus j by 2. And if the answers they return are the same, we simply return. Otherwise, if they disagree, we use our helper method to count iteratively if the left or the right is going to be our answer. We simply create a for loop, loop through, and try finding the c, which is whatever specific integer we passed in, and we return the total count. Whichever one has the higher count, is going to be the ultimate answer and we return to find our majority element. Now let's look at the time and space complexity. The time complexity is going to be n log n derived from master's theorem. For t of n we have 2 times t of n by 2 because we're splitting the array in halves and recursively calling plus 2 of n times 2 because we might potentially have to calculate iteratively which count is greater. The space complexity is going to be O of 1 because we're not using any additional data structures, although if you consider 
the recursive stack to be the space complexity, then it would be different. But I'm considering it to be O of 1 because we're not using any additional data structures to keep state or anything like that. So that's how you solve Unicode 169 using divide and conquer. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.